Hello, welcome to Worship Tutorials. Hello, friends. In this video, we're talking about the Helix, hmm. uh, our, our pros and cons on the unit, and how to help you make the decision on if this is the unit for you. It is obviously one, if you're a fan of the channel, that is near and dear to our hearts, but yes. we're gonna be as objective as possible. talking helix we're talking line six hx generation uh we're gonna hit pod go we're not gonna talk about stomp because that's gonna be for a different thing. we classify that differently you, we'll come back at the end and talk about why but let's talk helix so we're gonna break these things down by unit pros and cons and where we think they excel and if those things are important to you why you might choose it or what the drawbacks are right so helix pro number one it is truly the only all-in-one unit, as far as in, my in definition. Our and when we say that, we mean everything that you would would need to pull off a set with with a very complicated effects layout and that kind of thing is included on the unit, and you don't need anything extra except your guitar and a cable, of course. Uh, you might think to yourself, okay, well, the Kemper Stage. The Quad Cortex, the FM9 from Fractal are all in ones, but those don't include any kind of expression pedal. Yep. And if you add an expression pedal to them, if you want dual functionality with it, like if you want something to oh, handle yeah, yeah. volume and a wah, for example, or like use it to control volume and then be able to control like the, the mix level of a reverb or something like that, you have to have two expression pedals. But Helix actually has two expression pedals built in because mm -hmm. it has dual functionality. Um, so the Helix is truly and the it's only, attached. yeah, it comes with the unit. It's the only all in one unit in our opinion. So if that's important to you, there you go. Pro number two with the Helix is its community that surrounds it. It is basically like no other. Uh, Helix and Stomp and HX effects and pod go the line six, the Stomp. line six HX family has an extremely massive user base. And if you're not involved in it on the internet, there are a couple places you can go on Facebook. We'll link to them below. One is the Helix Praise and Worship Team user group. The other, you can join our WT Tone group where we talk a lot of Helix, but that a lot is, of other stuff. That is modeler agnostic. It's all encompassing, yes. right? Um, there are some great groups. Uh, there are some enormous groups that are the original groups, like run by Chad Boston That's and what those guys. That's they're called, original. Yeah, they're, they're great. Um, and, and what you get there is you get a community of people who love the product like you do, uh, if you choose Helix, hopefully you choose it cause you love it. Um, and they, uh, support one another. If you have questions about how to do something, you can ask and you will typically get it answered within minutes. Oh yeah. And there are people yeah. who offer different insights and takes on how to yeah. achieve what you're going for. Yeah. And Bradford so. and I are, are really active in the, the worship team user, uh, Facebook group, as well as a lot of other of our online yeah, internet friends. Others, yeah. So the the community around Helix is, in my opinion, probably the strongest of all of these modelers. Uh, another pro, the editor is really good. And like, straightforward and easy. Yeah, it is very, very good, very flexible. It's deep, but simple all at the same time. Yes. Um, and that works, and that's true of HX Effects Stomp. It's, Pod go. They're yeah, the but, HX effects, 
and yeah. Stomp are the same editor. The same exact editor. Yeah. Just, Podgo is not. But it's but it's it just really yeah. just looks different. Related to the editor pro, if you want to um, edit the unit itself without an editor, I think this like is on a live personal on Sunday, level. Yeah. I still think even with Quad Cortex doing what it does, I think Helix is the easiest thing to edit on the fly. I prefer the workflow without the touchscreen. That's just a personal yeah. thing. Objectively speaking, it yeah. still seems to be the less steps to get to where yeah. you want to be, and it's more straightforward. And, you know, we've been in, uh, it's not private stuff. Like, we were at a NAM show where Line 6 did a presentation, and they had touchscreen helixes that they tried. That's right. And they chose not to use them. Another pro, customer service from Line 6, Yamaha, is exceptionally good. Oh, yeah. Um, and there are actual human beings that interact with people from like on these forums and Facebook groups. I'm thinking of Frank, for example. Yep. A uh, guy from Line 6, uh, he will take care of people. I don't know if that guy sleeps ever. But Line 6... He's their, up early, I know that. Their customer service is exceptional. They have packages like from Sweetwater, if you get the worship package. Like if your Helix goes down, they will overnight one to you. For free. Replace it. Um, or that just, get yours repaired or and you something. And yeah. you don't have to pay extra for that. No. And you get patches from us for free, too. Yeah. Uh, one more pro that's not... We didn't write this down, but I think it's worth saying. It does sound very, very good. Oh, yeah. If you're of the opinion that Line 6 doesn't sound great... And maybe because the, the spider Helix, is the, your frame of yeah, reference. Yeah, like if you used a pod XT Live and you hated it, Helix is a completely different ballgame. Yeah. Hopefully you know that by now because it's been out there for a long time. Um, but it sounds exceptionally good. Yep. Uh, there are some cons with it. We And speaking of that, we do think that there are better sounds to be had elsewhere. I like how you put it, Bradford. It doesn't mean the Helix is worse. It just, just means, means the other units there. are better. That feels different to me. It does. <laughs> okay. Uh, con, there are some annoying quirks with the Helix. Um, because, for example, if you take like a parameter on the amp. But this is a pro what you can do. It's a pro and it's it's a double-edged sword, yes. right? Uh, what like, you can do is the pro, but the problem that arises like, is the con. Take the the gain control or the drive on the amp. Mm -hmm. You can automate that with any number of things. You can change it with a button. You can change it with a snapshot. You expression can change pedal. it with an expression pedal. If you assign it to be changed by multiple things, which we often do, we will have a, a, a stomp, like a, they call it a stomp shot, where a button changes it, and a snapshot. Stomp, like, snapshot. You can get into these scenarios where it's like it flips itself, yeah, it's like weird. it reverses we, the... We regularly have to go and tweak that as yeah, we're making patches. Yeah, and so there, because of how flexible it is, it does kind of... And like we're kind of like creating like... That's not exactly how they designed it to work. I think yeah. they designed it mostly to work with snapshots, yeah. but we do it with, with button press stomp presses as well so it's like you can sort of hack it but then you kind of get like these strange quirks i think we should also mention the helix lt yeah the lt um is a great like if you want the all-in-one on a budget like you can get a used lt for well under a thousand dollars oh yeah i've seen 700 yeah 800 900 dollars all day long yeah. for a used lt yeah. and when you consider who knows where used prices are going but oh, as yeah. of today but when you consider what takes what it takes to get like an amp pedals somehow something to power them all with yeah. something to carry them on maybe something to carry that yeah. in cables everything like you can't absolutely spend yeah 200 bucks and be set you could we but yeah we get we get questions dollars. all the time. Should I go floor helix floor or LT? Yeah, scribble strips are awesome. If you can swing it, the floor is great. But the LT is a great option. Oh yeah. Okay, in the HX family, we're also going to talk about Pod Go. We're going to quickly hit it. The pro for Pod Go, two pros. One, the sounds. It's the same as Helix sounds, essentially. So um, it's sounds great. And the other pro is the price. Like if you have. Oh, how much is it? Four hundred fifty dollars. Four fifty. So if all you're in looking, one. If you're looking, pri you only know, second all in one that exists. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking for you know under five hundred dollars new and and like lots of people get the Pod Go and they upgrade to Helix. So I don't know what the used market. But is I've for also Pod Go. seen people do the opposite. Oh, they the, sold a Helix because they realized they the Pod Go. Yeah. They were like, "This is all I need," and they pocketed yeah. some money. So there's that. So you've got pros for Pod Go: the price, the tones, the sounds. Uh, the third-party product market 
is at least from us. It's yeah, we the, you know it, it's as robust. Most as of our patches we've made for Podgo, yeah. except the ones that it just can't be. Yeah. So the and the same community exists around it. Uh, the size and the weight is really great. It's like no kidding. Like this, like <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. Not much it's bigger right than an iPad. There. We could I, I I can't reach it right now, but it's it's little and right? it's light. Yeah, so you can just throw it in a bag. Yeah, you're set. Um, it's like if you travel a lot or you need something to play, like if you're going on a vacation, and you want to take a guitar and a little something to play through. That thing is awesome. Yahtzee. Um, cons for it would be its build quality. It's pretty plasticky. I mean, you're you're looking at an extreme budget option here. It's still solid. Yeah. But, oh, it is. But yeah. It's plastic. I would use it. I wouldn't stand on it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right. Especially me, because I need I need to lose a few lbs. But uh, uh, the, so the build quality, and then it's pretty limited as far as DSP. Um, you can't obviously you can't you can do less than half of what you can do with a helix with the pod go. But you can still do compressor drive modulation amp delay reverb. There you go. Like in terms of like the sounds you need, yeah, it does it. You could cover a Sunday with it. Oh yeah, but you gotta like to make multiple reverbs. You gotta make adjustments. Yeah, do the stomp shot. Work thing. around its limitations. Yeah, but it's yeah. it. But some people love it and it sounds great. So. Thank you so much for watching. This is just one video in a multi-video series where we take all of the popular modeling units that are on the market in 2022, the ones we have experience with here at Worship Tutorials, break down their pluses and minuses. So if you wanna see the rest of these videos, all of that is gonna be linked below. You can also see the like over one hour long video that's all of it put together in a single video. The, this is designed to help you make the best decision for you for a modeling unit in 2022. They all have their pluses and they all have their minuses and different players might prefer different ones. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss another upload, including the rest of them in this series. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.